Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here for another edition of Ask Me Anything. This one is Ask Me Anything About Prison. So this should be a good one because I tell it like it is. The good, bad, and indifference. From guards who saved my life to guards who abused me. But anyway, before I get started, check out Larry Lawton Jewel Thief on Patreon. And check out our member programs both there and on YouTube. Please pass the word about our channel. We're growing and I have Larry Lawton's action crew. And we had two items so far and we won both of them. I don't consider it win, but we, we made a difference. And all you guys made a difference. And that's what makes this whole thing worthwhile. So I'm going to get right into Ask Me Anything. And I'm going to read questions. I got hundreds and hundreds of questions. And I'm going to jump right in and answer a bunch of Ask Me Anything questions. You know, the first one had me laughing. You know, it is, did anyone at all try putting it in your back end? If so, what did you do when they tried? You know, I kind of, I hate to say giggle, but n yes and no. Uh, they try you. And what I mean by them when they try you, uh, they will maybe uh, see if you're open to it, actually doing it. They'll also uh, see how vulnerable you are. Are you weak? Are you aggressive? How strong are you scared to defend yourself? They test you in a lot of different ways. Uh, now, exactly, like, did someone take out their, their thing and try to put it in me, you know, real quick or something? No, not like that. Uh, and if they did, I would have knocked them out or, or defended myself. And let me explain that, why I mean by that. It's not about what it is, you know, oh, does somebody hate having sex with a guy or any of that crap? It has absolutely nothing to do with that. As I tell people who I know are gay friends of mine, uh, listen to me. Uh, sex in prison isn't sex. It's it's abuse. Any way you cut it. So don't think, oh, look at all these guys you got. It, it's all BS. So whatever your preference, it's not fun in prison. It's just not. And so I hope I answered that question in the right way. But uh, no, I mean, it's there though. I've seen young kids get raped. I know a friend of mine who was in prison for a long time for a crime he did not commit. His first day in prison. His first day, five guys came into his cell, put a pillowcase over his head, and they raped him. And if that doesn't make you cringe, because it makes me cringe right now, it, it, it's terrible. And it does happen. Here's another one made me laugh a little bit. How essential was soap? You know, I didn't know how to take that question, you know, like, you know, drop the soap thing, and you hear all those jokes about prison. But let me tell you something. They have, uh, they give you soap. It's called state soap. And believe it or not, the state soap, when I started shaving my head, when I first went to prison, I had hair. I went to prison at 34 years old. I had hair. Once I got in there and I thought, uh, and I see that, one, my hair, I'm starting to lose it. But besides even starting to lose it, you know, when you fight someone, you don't want hair. you you rather have a bald head for a lot of different reasons. Slipping out of things, fighting, grabbing hair. You know, there's no such thing as a fair fight in prison. None. If I fought you in prison, you were in trouble. Because I'm trying to hurt you as bad as I can hurt you. Anyway, uh, so I sh started shaving my head. And believe it or not, the state soap, they, we call it state soap. We're the federal government. But they all, every prison, they call, hey, did you get the state soap? What we used to do with that state soap is amazing. Not only did people actually make things, they carve things out of it. They'd literally carve little trinkets. I saw a, whole, a guy carve a whole chess set. A whole chess set out of soap, out of the soap. And I mean, it looked unbelievably gorgeous. And then painted some of them black and kept them white like the, the soap. So, I mean, and the soap for my head was actually good. You know, there's certain soaps you can use for your skin or whatever. For me, it made my head glisten. I mean, it was actually pretty cool to say soap. Is it great soap? Come on, it's the little crap they give you in a little, you know, little package. It's like you see in anywhere. It's not good. It's but it's little. It, it's crazy what you can do and the artistic nature of some people in prison. It's amazing what I've seen guys carve out of soap. We also used to take soap, and <laughs> this is gonna be funny. Soap was glue. Believe it or not, it's glue. That and toothpaste. You could take toothpaste when you were in the hole. And you had a vent coming in, and a vent's blowing, and you're freezing. I mean freezing. They, you, you'd be sitting there chilling like, oh, they're not giving you blankets or anything like that. 
So you would take paper and you'd take magazines and you'd rip out a piece of a magazine and you'd put toothpaste like in each corner and literally put it up there in front of the uh, vent cover. Then you can actually just leave a little spot open and it'd get less air into your cell and wouldn't freeze. So literally toothpaste and soap was glue. Another thing we did with soap is pretty, pretty wild. In Atlanta, very old prison, very, very old. We used to take, and there was a hole in the plaster wall. Well, we used to take a, we ended up getting a key to, or whenever you get a key or a door key or something that you know that's contraband and you need to hide it. Here's how you hide it. There would be a hole in the wall. Literally, because this is an old prison, a whole plastic hole. I mean, uh, 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 plaster, it's plaster. There'd be a hole in the wall, maybe that big. So what we were used to do is we'd take whatever object we wanted to hide. It could have been dope. It could have been a key. Like we had a, a, uh, the, what makes me remember this so well is we had a, a door. In the door of a big steel door, they have like where you can, the holes where the handle is, but they're like a special kind of screw that you can only open with this special key and it would come off. And we used to end up sticking stamps in the door. I mean, 500 books of stamps. Again, we were bookmakers. We were uh, uh, running whatever we were running in the prison, we're almost like a bank. So what we used to do is have to have that key because if they find that key, then they're gonna know you're in the door. They don't go in the door. They don't know anything's in the door. They don't know you have a key. They don't just take that off. That's a job to take that off. So what we used to do is take that key, put it on the end of a string, take a piece of tape, put it in the wall, and then tape that string down the back end of the wall so it's hanging. Now, they can even look in that hole and couldn't find it because it's taped to the thing. But what we used to even do more, we used to take wet toilet paper. We used to get toilet paper. Now, if the hole was that big, you get a bunch of wad up toilet paper and you put it in that hole and you make it like, it, it looks just like it was a piece of plaster. Because they were all over the place anyway. So, you know, they come to, to fix holes. And it's an old prison built in 1903, Atlanta was built. So anyway, here we are. We, we place that thing. And then you take soap. And you make the soap go near the ends. Really nice. And then we used to have paint, colored paint, whatever the wall was. You would never know that that was a hole in the wall hiding something. Never know in a million years. Unless you went to every little hole in that whole place and pushed it. I mean, trust me. If they really want to check that cell out, they're going to find any. And I mean really, really. But I've seen them miss that spot hundreds of times on major shakedowns. Hundreds of times miss that spot. I mean, it was the best spot I've ever seen in prison. I mean, we had all the spots to hide stuff. Whether it was coffee mate cans and, and in the legs of the beds. And we'd cut under the thing again i told you guys about behind the shower we took out the the, the plate and the, where the shower is and kept our wine back there i mean there were so many hiding spots in prisons obviously it's a cat and mouse game that's what prison is it's a cat and mouse game between the the convicts and the guards and again we respected good guards they respected good convicts that's just the way it worked uh, today is a whole different world and it, it's a sad world. Is prison exactly like it is in the movies with gangs and rape as well? Uh, it's a great question. Prison can be worse. I don't know if movies really depict the, the monotony, the everyday uh, BS that goes on in prison, the, the abuses by guards, stuff of that nature. I don't know if that ever happened, but it, it, it's... It's crazy. It's a place you don't want to go. Please, you don't want to go. Here's a question. Was there ever a day where you said, thank God I'm in prison? No. No. Never. You know, uh, it's an old funny story. You know, when you're on a golf course, I don't know anybody golfs out there. You know what you say on a golf course? A bad day on a golf course is better than a good day anywhere else. Well, let me tell you something. Any day out of prison is better than any day in prison. There isn't a day in prison that you say, I'm glad I'm in prison. Doesn't mean I never said I didn't have a, 
I had a good time, you know, partied with friends. Uh, I told you, I did acid, did certain crazy stuff in prison, met normal good people in prison, really good people. But no, nobody ever says, oh, man, I'm glad I'm in prison. You know, that's an old fallacy people used to say, you know, oh, he just wants to go back to prison. Let me explain something. They don't want to go back to prison. Nobody wants to go back to prison. Here's what happens. The human brain is so powerful that what it does is it forgets the bad that happened to them. Who would want to go back to a place where they beat you or they torture you or they tell you what to do or they spit in your food or they literally, literally smack you in the head, uh, hit you with a flashlight, uh, lock you in a cell like an animal, uh, talk to you like you are the piece of garbage, worse than you talk to a an animal that can't even understand you. Uh, who would want that? Nobody wants that. What happens is our human being, we are so blessed to have the ability to forget things, the bad things that happen to us, whether it's abuse like myself or somebody else, anything bad, you as a person have the ability to put it aside, move on. That doesn't mean it doesn't affect you because it does. But until you come to grips with whatever it is that, that happened to you, you're going to have issues. Well, it's the same with prisoners. They know what it's like in there. So when they get out, you know, they're ecstatic. I'm out of prison. You, know, you go crazy. And you watch every every person getting out of prison. They're towing that line. They're, listen to me. I wouldn't even go one mile over the speed limit for six months. Literally would go one mile over the speed limit for six months. You, you 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 realize, but what happens is we have the ability to put it aside to, to no other animal does. You know, an animal knows. That's why dogs listen because they were beaten once and they'll never forget that. So they're gonna listen to you. Humans have that special quality, and I think that's a great quality to have. But getting back to that, so they don't want to go back to prison, but they forget about it and they get back into the drugs or they get back into whatever it did that got them into prison. And I, I often tell people, man, when you're thinking about any crime or anything, I want you to sit down, look, especially a dude who's been in prison. This is what I mean. Sit down and think about your worst days in prison. Do you want that again? Not one person's ever said, yo, yeah, that's great. I don't care. Nobody says that. Because if you think about the bad things that happen to you in prison and the control they have over you, it's crazy. You know, I don't know how we do it as a society. I don't know how we do it. As a society, I don't know why we treat people. We don't rehabilitate them. Stop them from doing the things they did do. That's what we need to do. Who was your best friend there and why? Good question. Uh, I think each prison, you you gravitate to one person or another. I had a friend in, in Edgefield named Paul Tolini. I'll mention his name. Uh... Paulie and I were close. We did legal work together. We fought the system together. We hung out together. We ate together. He lived up on a cell uh, up on the top. I lived on a cell on the bottom. And But we'd hang out at the law library. We'd talk. He was from Boston. I was from New York. So we're both from the Northeast. And we're in the South. So they didn't like us. We had intelligence. Uh, we were both very smart guys with the law and, and fighting the system. And we both... Paulie had a 30-year sentence. Uh, I had 412s, a lot less. But we fought. We both had the same kind of mentality. Uh, so Paulie was one of my best friends. Still is to this day. I know Paulie very well. But each prison, I had somebody that was kind of like, you know, friends you, you connect with. And believe it or not, you'll, you, you might see somebody later down the line in another prison and you reconnect. And then you get to know each other very well. You eat together. You know about their families. You, you, it's like anything else. So I did have some close friends to this day. Uh, just because you went to prison doesn't make you a bad guy. You made bad choices. No question about that. I'm not, I'm not going to support crime in any way. But you could, you could still be a good person. How many people did you run into with real cash with them? None. No, there's no cash in prison. If there is cash, I've seen cash in prison. It was smuggled in and it's given usually to a guard as a tip for something. Uh, but you don't see cash. It's not like I got cash in prison. Nah, that's not happening. Next question. I don't know if my question is too inappropriate, Larry, 
but I'm very curious to know what the deal is with sex in prison. You talk about suitcasing and how common it is. So my question is, does having things up your butt make you more open to having sex with a guy? And is there anything you could put up there as protection against prison rape? No, I don't think putting anything up your butt has anything to do with wanting to have sex with a guy, period. I think I think that's something people don't choose. I think it, whether you're uh, gay, bisexual, straight, uh, I don't know what else they have, uh, but something of that nature, I don't think it has anything to do with it. You know, uh, I think sex is common in prison. Uh, you know, guy on guy sex is common. I, I don't know, common, but it happens. Uh, is there something you could put up your butt to protect you? No, uh, nothing that wouldn't hurt you, obviously. But there's an actual law, and you report sex, you know, you, you report a rape, uh, especially again, a, a staff member. You know, two guys having sex in prison, I don't think they care or anybody should care. I don't know what happened. As long as it's truly consensual sex, obviously a guard can't have consensual sex with an inmate because he has power over him. And that can't happen in, in the workplace and in, in outside here in the free world whether it's anybody, whether it's girl or a uh, guy or girl or whatever it is, does not matter. Uh, so, you know, sex, I could say is common, but not, not like, you know, it's not like you see it or hear about it or people talk about it every day. Uh, there is, you know, there's guys that become uh, women in prison. If I don't know if they become or they just let that part of themselves out. Uh, but, you know, there's no way to protect yourself except being you, and, and no is no. Uh, you'll fight for it. You will. I, I mean, I would fight against somebody raping me or trying to get me to have sex if I don't want it. I mean, that's not what you do, you know. That's not what life is about. I say this all the time. There's two types of people in prison. Predators and prey. Two types of people. Predators and prey. I was a predator. That doesn't mean I preyed on people. But I was very aggressive. I was uh, a strong guy. Uh, my personality is a very strong type A. You know, I'll come at you, at you. I was not scared to fight and do what I had to do in prison. Uh, so I was a, t a predator. But I didn't prey on people. But there are people who prey on people. And just because of a kid's age, if you're 21, 22, 23, young, depending on your physical makeup, even though that's not all of it, I don't care how big and tough you think you are, I watch them wilt in prison. But uh, just because of that, you're a prey, and you'll be the manipulated or, or forcibly raped, and you can't stop five guys. I don't care how tough you think you are. You can't stop five guys. Nobody can. You know, that old Kung Fu Jack shit don't work. It just doesn't work. Here's one. Were you the baddest and toughest guy in prison that everyone feared you? Absolutely not. If you think you're the baddest and toughest dude in prison, you're going down. I saw big, tough guys get killed right in front of me by the littlest guy. It, you know, I was a pretty big guy, pretty strong guy. But shit, there's guys that kick my ass. There's guys I, I, you know, I would never, I never showed the fear, but there was fear, absolutely. It's the little guy you fear. It's the guy that's quiet that's going to come and try to kill you in your cell because he's a psychopath. So there are psychopaths. There's people. Listen, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Mike Tyson, I don't care who you are. I love Tyson, but he'll tell you that. There were people that he wouldn't have fucked with. Because these people are psychopaths. And uh, that's prison. That is prison. Prison is not a place where it's like, oh, hey, let's have fun. Hey, buddy, what's going on? You do do that. But I'm talking about fear for your life. Sure. And you're not the biggest and toughest. Nobody is. I don't care who you are and how tough you think you are. You go to prison, totally different ballgame. I think this should be who. But it says, what are some of the most interesting people you've met? I think it's going to be, who are some of the most interesting people you've met in prison? Great question. I've met some crazy, I met mob bosses I used to hang out with. Nikki Scarfo, Vic Arena, Patty Amato, uh, Vic, uh, Vic Amato, uh, Vic Amato, Vic Amuso. Uh, these were bosses of families. Vic was a boss of Lucchese's. 
uh, uh, Vic Arena was trying to take over the Colombo family. Nicky Scarfo was the head of the Philly mob, killed uh, 30 people and a federal judge. Uh, cra little, little crazy Nicky Scarfo. I met some really interesting people. I met very smart people, uh, professional athletes that were in prison with me. Uh, I played softball with. You're playing with a professional who's playing in the major leagues and now you're playing with them. There was a professional football player I used to hang with, good kid. Uh, I, yeah, I love when people comment. They say, oh, Larry's is a good kid. <laughs> yes, they are. You know, some people are. But it's just what they, you know, prison, prison has some, a lot of characters. I've met people from, I met a guy who was a Russian, who was a chess champ. Unbelievable. Killed his whole family. But my, his brain was unbelievable in chess. And I used to play chess. So amazing, amazing. Great question. Was a cell better with less people? Absolutely. Uh, some people obviously would love a single cell, they call it. You know, we used to call it the, the suite. Now, here's the thing, bad things. They have the cell set up for two-man cells. You get the right celly, and it helps a lot. You really do. It helps a lot because you get to know them. You eat with them. You talk at night. You talk about families. You really get to know somebody in a cell. You really do. But single cells is like, you know, you're talking about total privacy. Eh, total. There's no such thing as total privacy in prison. But as much as privacy as you can have. In fact, when I started writing letters to the prison system, uh, to senators and congressmen and really fighting the abuses going on in prison, I, uh, associate warden came up to me and said, hey, Lawton, will you stop writing these letters and stuff? Said, what are you talking to me for? I'm a lonely inmate. You know what I mean? What are you trying to do this bullshit for? He goes, no, if, if you stop this stuff, we'll give you a single cell and also give you what they call get out of jail free card. And, and you'd wonder what the hell does that mean? Get out of jail free card. Get out of jail free card means if I got put in the hole for bookmaking, you know, having excess of uh, stamps in my cell. You know, maybe I got, I lost my cookies one day and I cursed out the guard. Fuck you, motherfucker. Whatever you wanted to say, something like that. And you got thrown in a hole for disrespecting an officer. They'd let you out. Uh, there's little stupid things uh, you can go to the hole for. And they they said, well, we'll give you a get out of jail free card. Literally said that to me. I looked at them like, who do you, do? get the, oh man. That ward ended up go, getting fired. Other people got fired in that prison because they were abusing us. So bad. And I kept writing senators and congressmen and everybody. Question. Is the food good? Man, you just made me laugh. And I mean laugh. The food is so bad. So bad. When I got out, I had to have $7,000 worth of teeth damage uh, uh, repair. And I still need more. Matter of fact, there was somebody who offered it a, a dentist. Man, I really want to call that guy. Someone from Jersey, I think. He said, Larry, I'd, I'd love to do your stuff for free or whatever. Boy. I hope he hears this video and maybe contacts me again, emails me. But anyway, uh, the food is so bad. When I was in Atlanta, we would eat. I was in Atlanta in 97, 98, left in 99. And we were eating Desert Storm meat. It had on the box because I was in the kitchen. Had on the box, nine, uh, 1992. 1992. Think of what I just said. It was such bad meat that when you ate a hamburger, you'd think, oh, it's hamburger day. You know, that, that used to be a big deal. That was Wednesdays. Fridays was chicken. But, oh, Wednesdays, hamburger day. You'd bite into that hamburger. And I used to, used to get bone, bone, because they take it from the worst part of the cow. And uh, first of all, I don't know how they're feeding that to our soldiers. And it was such garbage. They put together meals in prison that, you know, they call it mystery meat because nobody knows what the fuck it is. And I'm telling you, shit, that'll fucking make you puke. And with that, let me just close and just say, listen, guys, I enjoy answering these questions. Keep them coming. Keep questions coming. Ask us, tell us what you want. I'm trying to keep my family educated and you are my family. You guys have been great. I really appreciate you. You know, I still have my book. You can get my book in the link below. Uh, I do speaking engagements at certain events for police and for uh, schools and corporations and stuff of that nature. Check it out, uh, what I do, in the links below. Please join 
pass the word about our channel. I really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, there's a great series here. Please go watch my Gangster Redemption book series on here. People are talking about it all over and they love it. They just love my whole series. You'll get hooked probably, but you'll love it. And it's great. It's a 100% true story. So I enjoy that as well. Thanks everybody. Please make good choices. Don't ever go to prison. Ask me more questions. Ask me anything because that's what this is. But don't, don't think it's cool. You're not going to get your wings. You're not going to get, you know, street cred because you went to prison. It's some of the most uh, embarrassing or embarrassing, the most lowest parts of my life were prison because I'm better than that. I'm better than that. And if I can educate you not to go to prison, that is what this, that's what this is about. And please join Larry Lawton's Action Crew because we're coming up with a few more uh, action items to try to help people here who don't have a voice. Thanks again, everyone. Stay safe, please. Much love, much respect from me to you. Have a great one. Stay safe, everybody.